I started losing my hearing when I was 28. I was having trouble understanding conversations at my kitchen table with my family. I felt alone even when I was with people. It was very bleak. When I was seven months old, I was diagnosed with a liver disorder. My parents were devastated, and then I think they were terrified as well because at the time, it was the mid-80s, and transplantation was still considered experimental, so there was no guarantee. When I found out that I had cancer, I was 23. The doctor did a blood test, and he called me back the next day and said that there was something very wrong and I should come right back to his office, that we needed to talk and you, you know, you never expect to hear the words you have cancer, you're never prepared for it, but at 23 it was particularly shocking and upsetting to me and to my family. I think the country needs to have a serious conversation with itself about whether it's willing uh, to spend the money required um, to lead to tomorrow's medical advances. We're compromising our future unless we, uh, we address this head on. For years, we've invested well. From the 1950s through the early 2000s, we cracked the genetic code, learned the fundamentals of cellular communication, and began to tease out the complexities of the immune system. Funded by federal money, labs across the country pursued basic research and did clinical and translational studies to turn this knowledge into therapies and cures. And the payoff was huge. But over the past 10 years, our commitment to medical research has faltered. The NIH budget flatlined, and its purchasing power for research fell by 20%. What does this predict about our ability to develop the next generation of targeted therapies, innovative diagnostics, and disease prevention strategies? You would be stunned how little one knows. <laughs> and how much one could know. The technology is available. What we really have to do is we have to have a much more thorough understanding of, um, of this um, molecular dialogue of molecules in the cell and between cells. And then we can perhaps by accident find out, you know, what would be a better cure against cancer and schizophrenia and Alzheimer. It may come from a completely unexpected corner. And this is the value of basic research, I think. The Albert and Mary Lasker Foundation was founded in 1942. It was a time of tremendous upheaval. World War II, a time of crisis. It was also a time for imagining a larger purpose. And Albert and Mary wanted to take that energy and channel it into a new goal, finding cures and new hope to battle diseases. I think one of the most important contributions of Albert and Mary Lasker to medical research was their vision. They realized that in order to be successful, the nation was going to need to make a significant commitment to healthcare research and in order to do so, this would require grassroots support so that voters encourage their representatives to support funding for medical research. In the early 1940s, there was so much left to learn. People only lived to be 63 years old. We didn't understand the causes of cancer. Psychiatric illnesses were hidden away from public view. We were only investing $10 million in today's dollars in biomedical research. And that paltry sum wasn't enough to bring us the answers that we needed to improve the quality of life for our citizens. Albert and Mary Lasker recognized that we needed to engage the public in this mission, that we needed to make them want to invest in biomedical research. So in 1945, they began the awards program, which celebrated the most important breakthroughs in biomedical research to galvanize the public to want to invest in this exciting enterprise, biomedical research, that could change the lives of so many people. Albert Lasker died in the 1950s of a cancer that medical science didn't have the answers for. And Mary Lasker watched him suffer 
and she didn't want others to suffer the way he had. And so she redoubled her efforts. Mary worked directly with congressional leaders and numerous presidents, particularly closely with Lyndon Johnson, both when he was head of the Senate and subsequently as president. She thought big. Of all the people that I know, and I know a lot of the scientists, the most important person in the whole cancer revolution in the United States is Mary Lasker. The amount of money uh, that's being spent for medical research is, well, it's just piddling. You won't believe this. Less is spent on, on cancer research than we spend on chewing gum. She didn't think that the government commitment to medical research should be done in little pieces. Rather, it should be approached as an integrated whole with a substantial and continuous commitment of resources. It may be tempting to put science on pause for a few years in response to challenging economic circumstances, but putting research on hold means that even when the money does become available, we lose more time because we'll have to rebuild labs, retrain scientists, reestablish model systems, and redo experiments. In other words, pausing research means putting patients and disease treatments on pause. If it was not for the public support of medical research, I would be deaf right now. I wouldn't be here without medical research. It wasn't even a life improvement, it was life. If it wasn't for publicly funded research, I wouldn't be here today. They really are creating miracle drugs, and I'm living proof of that. Many people don't realize that before one really has treatment for a disease that is meaningful and effective, you need to have an understanding of the basic processes involved. That takes basic science, and it takes a lot of work, and it takes time. You cannot do it without public support, and without a deeper understanding, we will not be able to really be helpful to the terrible diseases that haunt mankind. What can you do? Keep informed about research advances and share the wonder of science with your family, friends, and coworkers. Visit the Lasker Foundation website to learn about key discoveries in basic, clinical, and public health research and the therapies and cures that have benefited millions. If you are able, give to the medical research cause of your choice. And most importantly, let your voice be known People often say, I can't make a difference, but you can. Contact your elected representatives and let them hear your strong support for publicly funded research.